and he, where were you at when he did something wonderful for him? Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, give him glory. Come on, give him praise. Come on, adore him, adore him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Don't take me down too much because then I have to work my voice too much. Come on, give him glory right where you're at. If you're watching us live, give him glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Give him glory. Yes. Thank you. Give him glory, glory, glory. Say, give him glory in this place. Give him glory, Jesus. Come on. Give him glory. Hallelujah. Just say glory. Hallelujah. Glory. 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 I said him feedback. Glory. That's all right. Come on. Glory. Raise your hands. Glory. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to get your swords and stand to your feet and turn with me to 2 Kings 4. 2 Kings 4. I'm going to read two verses. I'm so glad for the leaders of this house. God bless you all. Somebody say nine years. Come on, somebody say nine years. Nine years. God bless you, minister. God bless you, great man of God on the drums. Amen. Somebody say nine years. Somebody shout nine. Yes, that was weak. Come on. Somebody shout. Somebody shout. Somebody shout. Yes. Stand to your feet for God's reading. Reading of his holy word. I'm going to read two verses. Well, verses 13 through 15, so that's three. Amen. Second Kings. Second Kings 4. Verses 13 to 15. And he said unto him, say now unto her, behold, you have been careful for us with all this care. What is it to be done for you? Would you be spoken for the king or the captain of the host? And he answered, I dwell, and she answered, I dwell among my own people. He said, what then is to be done for her? And Gehazi answered, verily, she has no child, and her husband is old. And he said, call her. And when he had called her, she stood in the door. Father, I know that I cannot do this without you. Daddy, I'm not here to perform for anyone, but I want to minister to the heart of your people. And so, God, if you would just open heaven as I speak, preach, teach, prophesy, sing, dance, jump, do whatever it is that you want me to do because I'm crazy about you. Father, have your way. Give us an ear to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying in this place. I want you to look in my container. You'll see some honey. Right there, you'll see some vials with honey. Yes, if you can bring that for me. I want you to put your hands over your heart. Put your hands over your heart. I'll let you know. There's something I'm going to release, and when I release it, you'll come forth as you're led. Hallelujah. I want you to put your hands over your heart. You hear your heart beating? Yeah. Say, Lord, I receive in my heart your manifold mercies, and I will not turn back to vomit. Come on, say it like you mean it. Say, Jesus, I've set you in my heart. Therefore, I am free from the battle within, and my journey has become a bestseller. Today, I can't hear some of you. Come on. Today, my heart is healed 
from all scars. And I bear the pain of it no more. As a matter of fact, it was not for the pain, but a new path and purpose. Today, my heart has found closure and Jesus has the key. Today, my heart is stocked with love. Come on, forgiveness, peace, joy, hope, resilience, and it is the tree of life. Say today, my heart will know by grace when to move forward, stop, get out, settle, drive, build, step, pull, throw, plant. Today, my heart understands it didn't happen to me. It happened for me. Come on, I couldn't hear that one. Come on. Today, my heart understands it didn't happen to me. It happened for me. Today, my heart understands it didn't come to bring shame. It came to shape me. And the ninth one, say today, my heart understands it didn't happen to destroy me. It happened so I can destroy it in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a seat. Have a seat. 19, we are living in 2021, but when you look, something took place in 1864. There was a manuscript entitled Alice Adventures Underground. And AKA, someone say Alice in Wonderland. Yeah. And, and as I began to study this, amen, I found out that she was only about seven years old and she's sitting on the bank of, of a river. And I don't know where some of us are sitting right now, but as she's sitting there, it says that a rabbit runs past her. And so she decides to follow the rabbit down the hole itself. And I don't know about you, but sometimes I, I believe that God is getting ready. You're going to be ready to run into the strange. You're getting ready to run into something that is not the same. Amen. Amen. And you're getting ready to run in to something that's going to open up a strange door. Somebody say door. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. How many of you received that? And the reason why I can say that is because I got a, I got a different call last week and, and a beautiful door just opened up just for me just like that. And I said, okay, God, I'm going to walk through the door. God says there's sometimes we wait to pray for certain things, but you're going to know that it is the door. Somebody say, I'm going to know. And, 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 and it's so funny because as I begin to study this, uh, when we look at 2 Kings, I like warfare, yeah. When we look at 2 Kings, uh, about the fourth chapter in verse 15, uh, amen. And I'm not going to bother your fingers all day, amen. But, 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 but it says that the Shinnamite woman was standing at the door. And, but, but not only was she standing at the door, uh-huh, I like that frequency, but she was standing uh, in the door. The, I, I come to declare that everything that was standing in your way uh, has to now make room for you in the name of Jesus. Uh, I decree and I declare that everything that was standing in Rhema, Karen, Alexandria, Stur, come on, open up your mouth uh, and declare over your own self uh, that everything that was standing, uh, because sometimes Times, uh, you can be standing in your own way. Come on, come on, uh, come on, come on, come on. Uh, and so we understand uh, that doors are significant. Somebody said the next door belongs to me. Somebody say the next door belongs to me. Uh, Revelation chapter 3, uh, it says I've set before you, uh, come on, an open door which no man is able to shut. Uh, there were some things that you and I had to shut uh, in the last season uh, because God said that was not the time uh, for the door to be open. Uh, but you are in a season uh, where you are right in your door and you are positioned there because God said now you are ready for it. How many of you are ready?
ready for it. How many of you would say, I'm ready for it? I'm, I'm ready for it. I'm, I'm ready for it. Natural doors. Natural doors allows us to go from one space to the next. Amen. And, and we understand the significance of, of natural doors. Amen. And I want you to understand that, that don't discount the door that God will open for you. Because sometimes the door may not look like it's much. Uh, come on. But, but, but the door is going to lead to something greater. Amen. Uh, the Bible tells me in 2 Corinthians 2 and 12, it says, My God opened the door of faith. Uh, um, Paul is speaking. He says, I had to go preach the word in Troas. And he says, as I went to preach the word in Troas, God opened the door. As you go, God is going to open the door. And sometimes you don't even know what God is going to use you to do. But just somebody said, I receive my door. I, re I receive my door. And we understand that door signifies destiny. Amen. So I call forth. So when the Lord had me to flow in the spirit and I was calling forth your butler and your baker, there's some things that you won't have to open anymore. More because God said I'm going to bring uh, the person, I'm going to line uh, the person in your life. Uh, you can be sitting at the table eating with somebody uh, and a door will just open uh, for you just like that. Uh, you can be connecting uh, and maybe cooking for someone uh, and all of a sudden God will begin uh, to ask you to minister to the person's spirit uh, and sometimes it may look like it doesn't make sense. Uh, somebody say you're going to do it uh, even if it don't make any because we, we, we are in a church, an age where everything has to make sense. But if you know anything about God, nothing really makes sense in order for him to what? Move. So God says he's going to provide keys and insight to guide us through impassable places. I want to lay the foundation a bit. So, 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 so when we look at the story of, of Alice, uh, she manages uh, to find a small key. It was so interesting because as I study this, it says it was a little key. Uh, but that little key is going to open up uh, to some major doors. And I want you to think uh, about the size uh, of your door, number one. I want you to think about the size of your door, the look of your door, the, the structure of your door. And then I want you to look at the size of the key. And sometimes we look at ourselves and, and we don't think that we, we can add up to it. Sometimes we look at ourselves and we'll say, God, can you use anything like me? Somehow. Sometimes because, see, Goliath got it mixed up because when David stepped in uh, into a mega tour, he didn't know what he was looking at. He was looking at the wrong thing. Somebody said, I'm not I'm going to look at it wrong this time uh, because the enemy looked at you wrong. Come on. Uh, how do I know? Because the enemy thought uh, that he could do what he could do to you. Uh, but little did he know you had a word uh, on the inside of you. Somebody said, I got the rock with me. Uh, I got the savior with me. Uh, I got Christ, uh, the chief cornerstone. Uh, somebody said, the rock walks with me. As I begin to study this, the Lord said, release keys. Whatever key that you need, I want you to look into your hand. It has just come. Whatever key that you need, I want you to look into your hand. It has just come. No, we're not doing no, no, no palm reading, no. But I want you to look at your hand. I want you to look at your hand. The Lord said, I'm releasing master keys. And I said, God, okay, talk to me. He says, even though it's a little key, it's a, it's a master key. Some of you just have a key now to bind things. You weren't able to bind it before. But God says, now I've given you the master key to bind. Some of you just got now keys to open, to open. Come on, church. I don't know what keys you are looking at, but I'm looking at the master key that God has given me. There's a master key. There's a master key. There's a master key. Some of you just got the key of dominion. You got the key of dominion. Do I got a somebody that say I got the key of dominion? Come on, church. There's a key of dominion. If you get excited, God will get excited. Oh my God, Lady D, let me move you from the door and come up front uh, so you can help me with this message. Oh, you got the key uh, of dominion. Somebody say dominion. Uh, there's a dominion anointing. Come on. Uh, there's a dominion operation. Uh, how could it be uh, a little lad like oh God, uh, a little lad like David uh, walks into a door and God gives him the key uh, to dominion. See, when you, when you walk into the door that your supervisor 
is trying to hire someone over you. As a matter of fact, God says, I'm hearing this clearly in the realm of the spirit. For every door they try to shut down for you, God said, I'm going to shut it down for their children. Touch not my anointed to my prophet. Oh God, touch not. It's not just about the titles, but if you are anointed. Somebody say, I got the master key. The, the, the master key is essential. Come on. Yes, the master key is essential because it ensures everything is open at the same time. So, so there must be an opening. Somebody say opening. And so the master key ensures uh, that the central control of different entrances and spiritual exits uh, are open at the same time. Uh, that's why that's why heaven opened uh, on the 10th day. Why? Uh, because when you look at Acts chapter 2, uh, it says that they were in all the same place. Uh, but how could they be in the same place uh, and nothing is flowing? Uh, that's why I need you to open up. Uh, somebody say hallelujah. Uh, somebody say hallelujah. And when they were in the same place, uh, my son, when they were in the same place, uh, at the same time, then everything opened. Uh, so if you're too cute uh, to stand and give God a glory, uh, open up, open up, uh, open up the floodgates, uh, open up the levy gates, uh, open up uh, your hallelujah. Uh, okay, okay, some of y'all looking to him, okay. Okay, the Bible tells me I'm going to shift a bit uh, that the centurion, my God soldier, who was not even hearing scripture, Scriptures, uh, who didn't even spend time walking with Jesus uh, was able to access a door that the disciples could not access. Uh, why? Because when you become too familiar with the place that you're in, uh, you weaken the potency of it. Uh, you weaken the impact of it. Uh, God, let me never get too familiar with you. Uh, God, let me never get me too familiar with you. Uh, God, I won't. I don't want to get familiar with your glory. Uh, I don't want to get familiar with your grace. Uh, I don't want to get familiar with Hallelujah. Uh, I don't want to get familiar. I don't want to get familiar. I don't want to get familiar with your word. I don't want to get familiar with your sound. There's a sound. God said, I'm releasing a, a new sound in this place. When, when you turn the key, somebody just go ahead and turn the key. You're going to do things that don't make no sense. Somebody say, turn the key. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody say, turn the key. The master key was God who gave Adam a master key in the garden of Eden. God said to Adam, I want you to listen, you can eat of any tree, but don't you touch the tree of knowledge and evil. But I'm going to give you the key. It was the disciples that walked with the key, El. They were walking with the master key, my God. My God, if I don't know about you, I want I would have gotten a double portion, a, a triple portion of what Jesus was walking with. I don't blame the sons of thunder when the sons of thunder decided that they were wanted to sit down where Jesus was, and Jesus rebuked them. They said, "Lord, you don't even know what you're talking about. Have you ever asked God for something that was a little bit too much for somebody else? But you know it was not too much for you." And when God released it, uh, then you understand now. Uh, I understand God's and eyes uh, have not seen and ears uh, have not heard. Uh, who am I talking to? Uh, there's a sound uh, like a rushing uh, mighty wind. It filled the place. Have a seat, have a seat. Uh -uh, there's a birthing. Somebody said master key. Why do we need the master key? Because Isaiah 59 and 19, the B clause says, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord lifts up the what? The standard. And so, so I know that I have to have a key because sometimes the enemy will come to buffet my mind. Sometimes the enemy would come to play with my thoughts. Sometimes the enemy wants to come to build something in my spirit, man, that God did not say. And you got to know how to lock him out. Somebody say lock out. Come on, somebody say lock out. I remember one time I tried to be smart and I tried to come into my mother's house a little bit too late. I didn't know that my mother decided to lock the door. Come on, church. And, 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 and so when you decide 
inside uh, that you're going to lock the door. There's some things uh, that cannot come out. Uh, and there's some things that cannot come in. Uh, and there's some things that cannot uh, come out. Somebody say, Master Key. Uh, how many of you holding the key? Uh, how many of you know what you're holding? Uh, because, because you got to know uh, what you are holding. You are the key. Uh, you, you are the key. Uh, listen, you are the key. Uh, God said it works because you work in it. Uh, God said it works uh, because you showed up. Uh, Somebody said the lock. So your, your key, listen, have a seat. Your key, your key doesn't have to be big. I realize it doesn't have to be shiny. Come on. It doesn't have, it doesn't have to have fandangles on it. Come on. It doesn't have to be new. Sometimes the key is old. Sometimes God said, I'm going to take you back to an old spring. Sometimes he said, I'll take you back to old wells. And he'll say, I want you to dig the wells again. Somebody say key. Come on. So the Shunammite stood in the door. And she's wondering, what is this man saying? Because I can just imagine her thinking some thoughts. Have, 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 have somebody ever said something to you like, okay, you're just trying to stroke my ego. You're just trying to make me feel good. Maybe, maybe it was an iron door. Because what she was experiencing was an iron door. Come on. And, and, and maybe, I'm saying iron because... She had everything. Have you have you have ever had everything? But there's one thing. There's there's one thing, and you're like, God, uh, if I could just have that, uh, my God. So so she's standing up uh, in the door, and some of us uh, may be like her. God said, I've summoned you to the door. I hear it uh, in the name of Jesus, and He called her, and and she stood uh, right in the door. So in other words, now you've occupied the space. Uh, we understand in the realm of the spirit. And even the natural that atoms atoms are an empty space it's like a vacuum where nothing is filled and so the moment you showed up and you begin to fill the place and fill the space somebody said it showed up at my door I prophesy in the name of Jesus it's gonna show up at your door it's gonna show up in my mailbox who am I talking to it's gonna show up on my job it's gonna show up for my son come on it's going to show up for Deacon Leroy, my son. Come on, it's going to show up. It's going to show up for my daughter, Amari. Come on, it's going to show up. It's going to show up. The Bible tells me in the book of Acts chapter 12 that Peter was all locked up and there was nothing to get him out. I hear you, Holy Ghost. And the Bible tells me that the church had an all-night worship service. Come on. The church had an all-night praise service. The church began to pray. What happens when you begin to pray? What happens when you and I begin to pray? Come on. What happens when you and I begin to pray? See, the enemy is going to want us to think that our prayers, the factual, fervent prayer of the righteous doesn't avail much, but we understand that it does avail much. So the moment you begin to put your mouth to it, uh, the moment you begin to erupt it, uh, the moment you begin to break up the follow ground, something begins to what? Now, sometimes when you look at your door, it can be rusted. Uh -huh. Sometimes have you ever looked at some doors? Uh, have you walked by an old house uh, and the doors look rusted and uh, it looked like there's corrosion on it? Uh, sometimes the, the handle of the door is about to fall off uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, so when you're looking at it in the natural, uh, you might come up and say, I don't even want to go up uh, into that, but somebody declare in the name of Jesus, even uh, if it's rusted, even uh, if it's corroded, uh, I hear God said in Joel chapter 2, and I shall restore the years of the locust, the years of the canker worm, the years of the palmer worm, the year, everything that I missed out, everything that the enemy came and ate up, everything I let out and let loose and let go, I shall restore. Somebody say, Restore it, Lord. Somebody say, Restore it, Lord. Think about it. I want you to think about your door. I want you to think about it, really, really think about it. And I want you to position it in your heart. In your heart, you've just unlocked it. You've just unlocked it. You've just unlocked it. You've just unlocked it. The Bible tells me in John 9 and, and 2 that 
that Jesus' disciples come to a familiar place. And, and they say, man, they said, our master, did this man sin? Uh, and Jesus responded, he said, no, this man, John 9 and 2, he says, no, this man did not sin. He says, but what happened to him? Somebody says, happening. He said, the thing that, that happened to him was not because he sinned. He said, it, it's because of the glory of God. He says that th this thing may be made glory. Somebody say, glorious. This, this thing, whatever happened to you, it was not for your detriment. Oh my God, but it was for your elevation. What, 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 what happened? Because the Bible tells me that, that he was there. And I could just imagine how long this man had been blind up. And, and what, 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 what really baffled me uh, is how quick the disciples uh, were willing to point out his blindness. Uh, but it's so interesting to how people uh, are so quick to point out uh, some of our mistakes and our failures. Uh, they're so quick to point out uh, where we missed it and where we dropped it. Are uh, uh, they so quick to point out uh, or how I slipped uh, and slide? Uh, but baby, have you ever looked uh, of how far you went? Uh, you went down the rabbit hole, yo. Self. Oh, come on, church. And had it not been the Lord, the Bible tells me the Bible tells me in the book of Psalm chapter 41 that David said, I was stuck in the miry clay. Have you ever been stuck? Have your door ever been stuck? And you've been pulling at that thing and 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 pulling at that thing. And, that thing. and the more you pull you get tired the more you pull yeah 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 the more you pull there's resistance there and everything that came to resist you it's because what you're carrying it's because what you're walking in it's because of the shakina it's because of the glory and you pull it and you say god when when will this thing move ay 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 it's unlock, it's unlock, it's unlock as of two. Somebody said today, somebody said today, Lord help me with this. Somebody said it's unlock. Something was over this man's life. When I was studying this, I said, God, I began to jump and shout and I began to say, God, I receive this for the church. I said, something was over this man's life. There was something locked over his life. Today, in the name of Jesus, it's unlocked. God, and I thank you for the flood that's coming. Come on, come on. I thank you for the flood. Come on. I thank you for the flood. Thank you for the flood. Uh, the Bible tells us in, in Exodus 11 that, that Israel was locked for 400 years. They were locked down. You know, nowadays if something happens in college classes or in, in, in just on campus, they have, they have the doors were locked automatically because they want to make sure that there's no intruder. Israel was locked up for 400 years. Could you imagine being locked in the same place? Come on, church. The, the same space. But what I love, I'm locked in, but I'm still growing. I'm locked in, but I'm still advancing. Come on. I'm locked in. You thought that by locking me there, it was going to stop the prayer. Come on. Uh, you thought. Uh, okay, some of y'all looking at me. Okay, am I speaking to anyone online? Uh, is anyone watching? Anyone watching? Uh, uh, so, so, so when they locked Jesus uh, and they rolled the stone past, uh, oh God, the entrance of the mouth uh, of the tomb. Uh, so they locked him. And so the enemy, the enemy said, I took the key uh, from Jesus. Uh, I could just imagine the enemy saying on the cross, I took something from Jesus uh, and I can just imagine Jesus not saying nothing uh, and sometimes when God uh, allows uh, you to be in a place uh, of silence uh, he'll say don't say nothing uh, cause it's not the third day yet uh, don't say nothing uh, it's not your time to get up out of it yet uh, don't say nothing uh, because when you get up uh, hey, 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 h
Get up in your spirit. Get up in your emotions. Get up in your mind. Get up in your heart. You can't allow that thing to sit on you, to rest on you, to muzzle your mouth. Get up. Yeah. Listen. Israel, Israel was locked down. Um, um, have you ever chained a dog? Um, so uh, I remember growing up, we had a dog named Mutt. And what I, Mutt used to run wild all the time. Yes, his name was Mutt. And so I had to chain him. Uh, and, and, but when we would turn him loose, Mother Mary, it's like he would go crazy. If God ever loose you from something, if God has loosed you from something, I just want you to jump up uh, and give him glory. If, he, if he's loosed you from something, uh, only about three people he's loosed. Uh, my God, my God. Uh, okay, he's loosed about five. Uh, he's loosed, he's loosed. Uh, has God ever loosed you? Uh, my God, my God. Uh, my God, my God. Uh, I remember when he loosed me. Uh, yes, I remember when he loosed me. Uh, how many of you remember being loose? Uh, oh my God, I remember Shoko. There's a loosing. There's a loosing anointing. There's a loosing anointing. There's a loosing key. So if you struggle with it, now God gives you the key to bring someone else out. If I struggle with sexuality, God now gives me the key to bring someone out. If I struggle with, oh God, bad low self-esteem, Lord, come on, shut up. Now he gives me the key to bring someone Israel have been in the same spot, but I decree and I declare you come in as a Moses in the 21st century and you are about to boost and burst ironclad doors open over Miami, over over Hollywood, over Liberty City, over Bahamas. Somebody declare wherever your friend release, release the name, release the name, release the name, release the name. As a matter of fact, when, when Moses showed up, everything start to turn. My God, here little fire is turning. Oh my God, you'll find a little talk with Jesus. Makes it right. Somebody say open, open. Oh, I forgot to announce to you the title of the message. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I got two things to tell you. It's done. Speak to someone else. It's done. Someone else. It's what? Somebody say it's done. Sometimes, uh, sometimes God will look uh, and say, you coming out uh, if you don't even feel it. Uh, you coming through it. Uh, you, I'm going to prepare a place and a table before you in the presence uh, of your enemy. You coming. Uh, you coming. If I got to send a prophet uh, in to bring you out. Uh, listen, when a prophet prophesies, uh, oh my God, listen, I'm going to get happy uh, when the first prophet says it. Uh, I don't get happy when the second prophet says it. Uh, I get happy when the first because the second is just confirmation, baby. The first have to give away. And then the second come in. Somebody said, Lucid Lord. God looks at them. God looks at them. Thank you. He says, I'm going to correct something. He said, I know you've been asking and you've been saying that Moses went to Pharaoh. I want you to let my people go unlock. He says, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to thrust you out. I'm not just going to have you to move and walk out, but I'm going to thrust you out. Look at your neighbor and say, when it's time, it's time. When it's time, it's what? Come on, when it's time, it's what? Has your water broken yet? Has, has your water broken? And, and, and the thing about it is, um, there has to be evidence that the water has broken. Because sometimes we feel contraction, right? Right, Deacon James? Yes, men feel contraction too. Because they got to give birth too. Yes. They're giving birth is something different. Come on, church. Come, come, come. Let's go in spirit now. Sheep begat sheep. It didn't say male sheep or female sheep. The word just says sheep begat what? Number one, I want to leave three things with you. Number one, the Lord says your lack is already taken care of. Come on, receive it. He says your lack has already taken care of. Why, why am I saying that? L look at verse 13. Put up verse 13, media. 
Um, the reason why I said this is because it was something strange. Because when you look at 2 Kings 4 and 13, it says, Then said he, verse 13 says, Then said he, then, then he said unto him, Say now unto her, Behold, you have been careful for us with all this care. What is it to be done for you? We're going to talk about that next. Would, would you be spoken for the king or the captain of the host? And she answered, I dwell among my own people. Then look at this, verse 14. And he said, okay, when, what then is to be done for her? You notice he's speaking to her first. She, see, sometimes we don't want nothing. He was speaking to her first, right? And she said, I, I dwell. Some of us so sedity and stush. But you know, listen, God is opening up something for you. And you know, it depends on who he uses. So some of us, we pretend. Come on. <laughs> Have you ever been hungry? You had no money? And, and then maybe you went to the store and you're like, oh, God, I need a miracle. So what God does, he'll send a miracle through someone that you know. And, and what you do now is say, oh, I'm not hungry no more. Because you don't want them to know that you're hungry. Because if they know that you're hungry, they're going to think that something is off with you or what's going on with your life. But then God will say, listen, all that you've cared about, you've taken care of so many others. He says, now it's time for me to take care of you. How many of you receiving that? Your lack. He says, I've already taken care of your lack. Look at yourself and say, self, I lack nothing. Come on, say, I lack nothing. So in the story in chapter 5, interesting enough, in, in Alice in Wonderland, she comes across this caterpillar. And, and, and you know anything about a caterpillar, a caterpillar moves slow. So number one, your lack is already taken care of. Because she was lacking something major. And I decree and I declare everything that we need, God has already provided. Everything that God, everything you've been praying about and crying about and asking God when, when will you unlock it? In the name of Jesus, this prophet has shown up this morning to declare that it's already done. It's already done. Somebody say it's a done deal. Somebody say it's a done deal for me. So when you look at, 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 at the story, back to my story of Alice, you know, it was interesting enough, somebody say chapter 5. So chapter 5, he introduces a, a caterpillar that comes into her life. Sometimes things move slow. Have you ever said, God, you're moving slow? Am I the only one? Raise your hand if you, okay. Okay, thank you for all the truth. Raise both hands if you. Okay, Pastor, I only put up one hand. Pastor, okay. I got to put up both my feet, but I, I may, I may, I may. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes, sometimes he moves slow, and and, and, and you like me. I've asked, I've had to ask God, Lord, help me to be patient, because I've missed some stuff because I've not been patient. But I'm in a season where now God says, just relax. Just re somebody say, just relax. Somebody say, just relax. Somebody, somebody say, just relax. Just relax. Somebody say, just relax in God. Yes, yes, yes. You've been fighting this thing and want to work this thing, and and you know you just planted it up, and you've been pouring water after water, and you've been speaking to it, Joe. So just relax and let the sun do its thing up let the s-o-n do its thing not the s-u-n up let the sun do his own thing up so now if you notice the prophet is speaking to her but she says i'm in my i'm among my own people and he's like okay okay so can we get somebody to speak for her right l because if you got an opportunity ill for a scholarship and somebody's giving you something you know listen some of you you passed her or what should never have been passed to someone else and now God says, uh, it's now coming back to you uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, if you're like me, I, I like to pass up stuff. Uh, I do. I like to give people the best. I do. Uh, I like to give people uh, what I desire. But can I tell you, uh, sometimes what you are willing to do for people, uh, people ain't willing to do for you. Uh, oh, my God. Uh, come on, church. Uh, have you ever been willing? Uh, and you thought uh, that they were going to be willing to. Uh, then you found out uh, what? 
what you were willing to do. Uh, they sure enough was not willing to do. Uh, or I'll give you this. And you would give them the suit. You would give them your last shoes. You would give them the earrings out of your ear. Come on. Uh, you would give them the shirt. Come on. Uh, you would give them the shoes. Come on. Uh, you would give the Bible tells me. Uh, in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 17. Uh, and when you look at chapter 18 also. Uh, that David shows up to the king. He shows up to his palace. Uh, he just shows up to the door. Uh, and the Bible tells me that Jonathan uh, started to strip himself. Help me, Holy Ghost. Uh, he didn't move in slow motion. Uh, strip. Uh, we decree and declare we strip uh, the enemy from his power. Come on. We strip uh, the enemy from his authority. Uh, you no longer have authority over me no more. Uh, you no longer have authority over that no more. Uh, you no longer have authority over my spirit man no more. Uh, you no longer have authority over my mind. Uh, come on, church. Because uh, you know that there's some things we used to wrestle with. Oh, I'm like an emotional roller coaster. Oh, come on, church. But now that you've been planted, now that you understand, and so there's a stripping process. Somebody else trip. Somebody else trip. God said, I will give it to you because you desire it. Somebody said, I desire. She said, I dwell among my people. She, she acting like she don't want nothing. I don't know about you, but there's a whole lot of stuff uh, that I'm believing God and it's not material uh, because the material is not going to profit nothing. Uh, the words that I speak, uh, they are spirit uh, and they are life. Uh, somebody say, feed me, Lord. So Alice in, in chapter 5, prophetess, a caterpillar slowly crawls into her her life, and then the, the caterpillar begins to have a conversation with her. Listen, the caterpillar said to her, I'm, I want you to admit what you did. Say, okay, I'm, what? He said, I want you to admit what you did. And so now she begins to confess. She begins to say certain things. She begins to talk about her current situation and uh, her current crisis. And she begins to talk about a whole lot of stuff. Uh, and then after the caterpillar listens to her, the caterpillar now turns. Uh, now, now here Here's the thing, the caterpillar is smoking a pipe. You want me to confess, but you smoking a pipe. Go ahead and confess. So now Alice is confessing to a caterpillar. Makes no sense. Uh -huh. So what are you saying? Then, they, then he turns and then he says, by the way, um, on um, one side of the mushroom, if you, you eat the mushroom, one side of the mushroom uh, will make you taller. Then he says, the other side of the mushroom is going to make you shorter. I said to you, number one, your lack is already taken care of. Somebody said, my lack is already taken care of. Uh huh. And so he says, one side of the mushroom is going to make you taller. And he says, one side of the mushroom uh, it's going to make you shorter. And so what she does, because she doesn't know. Have you ever been to a place where you don't know? God, God, I don't know if I should go forward. Or I don't know if I should go to that ministry. And I don't know if I should get married to that person. And I don't know if I should actually move from this place to another state. And I don't know. I don't know. Come on up. I don't know if I should go down into valley. I don't know if I should go to the mountaintop. Come on. Have you ever been to a place? The Bible tells me in the book, I hear your Holy Ghost. First Kings. Oh, my God about the 17th, 18th chapter. The Bible said that the prophet Elijah showed up uh, on Mount Carmel uh, because the people were vacillating. Uh, it was like a seesaw. Remember when you were young? Uh, uh, Pastor, you remember when you were young? You go on the seesaw and it was like it was up and down. Amen. And, and the thing about it is uh, you didn't mind being on a seesaw, Lady David, as long as the person was in it with you. Come on up. And sometimes life is up uh, and sometimes life is down. Uh, sometimes life gets in uh, and sometimes Sometimes life gets out. So now, now Alice is saying, I got two. I got a mushroom in my hand. So what she does, she breaks it in two. And, and it doesn't make sense, but because since she doesn't know which side. And so what, what, what you say in prophetess? So, so the Bible tells me in Deuteronomy 28 and 13, the Lord make you the head and not the tail. That's two. That's two. That's two direction, either up or what down. So when she breaks Dick and Leroy, the mushroom in two. She had to figure out which piece to bite and which piece to swallow. So Deuteronomy 28 and 13 says the Lord make you the head and 
not the tail. You shall be above only. I look at you. I look at you, young man. Look at me. Young man on the drums. Look at me, baby. I decree and I declare everything in your life is raised in the name of Jesus. You're going to raise up musicians and singers for the anointing in your life name of Jesus as young as you are in the name of Jesus you're gonna know how to bite you're gonna know how to chew you will know how to swallow pause 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 just like Alice we have to know what to feed on based on our current journey based on our current state and our current mindset so so she breaks the mushroom into two pieces and and if she bites the right what will the right one do in the right hand if she bites the left what will the left one can I teach just a little bit more say all of my needs have been taken care of say all of my lack there is no lack God has taken care of it I know it's a word of encouragement but can I tell you because you have cared for so many God said now I care I care where you live I care where you drive I care how you pray I care how you give I care how you oh God I care when you emptied yourself and gave it to someone else just like Jonathan stripped himself and gave everything to David while David was at the door he didn't even come into the house yet Jonathan started to strip himself I decree and I declare uh, everything that got to be stripped. Uh, God strip me. Uh, if you gotta strip me of it, uh, if you gotta strip me from it, uh, if you gotta strip me out of it, uh, if you gotta strip me, uh, whatever you do, uh, God do it quickly. Somebody say quickly. Alice now, um, she breaks the mushroom into two. And she gotta figure out which piece to bite and swallow. Our spirit man bites. That means what we ingest. Um, when we chew, that means what we meditate. Somebody say bite. Somebody say chew. Have you ever bitten something and spit it out? You spit it out quickly because you don't like how it tastes. Maybe your palate was not receptive of it. So our spirit man eats, bites, and chew. That means meditate. And swallow. Someone say swallow. Swallow is what we internalize and eventually believe and live and walk out. So Alice tastes one part of the mushroom and it shrinks her. Um, anything that comes to reduce you is not of God. Anything that comes to make you smaller. Try to ball you up into a hole. Now, now I know God will deal with our spirit. Come on now. But, but we live in a world where the enemy tries to shrink the church. The enemy, the enemy wants to make, make, make a sound. And, and you know how it is, the enemy, some, have you ever, okay, growing up, you know, if you were ever bullied, the bullied had a big old what? Mouth. The bully had a what? And just the sound of the bully's mouth would make you what? Come on, church. And so you have to understand, Dick and James, that sometimes the enemy, all he has is a roar. All he has is a big old one. Because he thought that he was going to stop you with his mouth. So every mouth that was put upon you, in the name of Jesus, I now, now return it back to them. I now decree and declare that they will eat what they spoke about you. I now decree and declare. See, some of y'all don't understand that. Some of y'all, you have to understand that I'm not going to sit there and let you speak that about me. I'm not going to sit there and yum that. Me can yum it. No, you yum me back. You yum me back. You yum me back. Me no, you baby, you listen, whatever you come out of your mouth with, that's what you're gonna eat. And so now Alice bursts, she bites a part of the mushroom up and it shrinks her. And sometimes you can eat in some places and it will shrink you up. Sometimes you can be around some people and they shrink you up. Yeah, because they know what you're working with. But the thing is, you don't know what you got on the inside. You thought that you had to bite off of that uh, and bite off of them uh, and chew off of that uh, and chew off of them uh, when God said if you chew the word if he said if you if you eat 
the word. He told Ezekiel in Ezekiel chapter 3. He said, listen, listen. I want to put something before you. And he said, I'm going to put the word on the inside of you. Stay with me. He said, my lack is already taken care of. He said, eat the word. He says, when you eat the word, you're not going to like how the word tastes. There's some word God gives me. It's not going to make me feel good. So motivational messages all time. Oh, y'all not looking at me? Okay. Okay, let me help some of y'all. Uh, okay, my mother was a Kingstonian. Uh, so my, my patois is not, is not as chung. Uh, you know, the Jamaicans say chung man. Talabinam and chung man. Right, so, so we can yam. Uh, listen, there's some things that we can yam. Uh, we can yam material messages uh, and feed on that only. Uh, God, give me the eternal manner. Come on. Uh, that manner on high. Uh, that manner that never grows old. Uh, oh, God, I can yam warfare all the time. Aye, 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 because even Solomon uh, had rest on every side. Me can yam hit. Me can have hit in my heart. And then want to tell my sister, my brother, I love them. Something is wrong. Me can yam wealth messages. All the every day I'm talking about message of wealth. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Me can yam it. It will begin to shrink. My spirit, they got to be balanced. Somebody say balance uh, me can yam law 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 feed me grace uh, feed me kingdom uh, kingdom is my portion uh, me can yam sin messages uh, every Sunday after Sunday uh, I should have a conviction in my spirit uh, that I cannot live in sin uh, I cannot live in iniquity uh, I cannot live in shame there's some things me can yam but can somebody say feed me the truth Feed me the truth on holiness. Me want a yam righteousness. Okay, some of y'all, if you're watching me, she bites two parts. If there's only one of you watching me, see, see Alice bit one part of the mushroom, it shrinks her. And then she bites the other part. It elevates her. Somebody say, feed me. Somebody say, feed me. I want a yam holiness. I want a yam righteousness. I want a yam truth. I want a yam katabosoto. Somebody feed me the truth. Tell me the truth. Sometimes I'm going to suffer. For after you have suffered in a little while, the God of all grace uh, in your suffering. Uh, he graced you in it. Uh, baby, you suffered a little while, uh, but he gave you grace. Aye, aye, aye. He gave me grace. Uh, while you were looking at the suffering, uh, I was yamming grace. Uh, while you were looking at me shrinking, uh, I was yamming innovation. Uh, somebody say, feed me the truth. Feed me the truth about hell and heaven. Feed me the truth. There is a hell. Okay, that's when all the people turn me off. That's when all, all, all the people um, say, wait a minute. Because we have to be careful about the sound. We have to be careful about what we're eating. If, if God rebukes me, he won't leave me in a rebuke state. He will correct me. Then he will shift. So Alice eats the other part of the mushroom because she realized that she shrank too small. And I decree and declare that you will not shrink before your enemy. The enemy is not the man or the woman. We know who our adversary is. Stay with me. Give me about 30 more minutes and I should be done. We know who our adversary is. Somebody say no lack. You know, the Bible tells me in the book of Mark about the 10th chapter that Jesus is having a conversation. And have you ever had a conversation and people just come in and butt in? And then they come in and, oh, God bless you. Or they'll say, oh, I know. Sometimes if you're around some people, you just keep your mouth. Especially if you don't know. So this is Mark chapter 10. If you look at Mark chapter 10. About the 21st verse, it says Jesus is having a conversation. And all of a sudden, this man comes in, this young man, and he says, he says, oh, he says, Master, what must I do to have eternal life? And, and then, then he begins to give Jesus his perfect resume. I've never sinned. I've never committed adultery. I've never lied. I've never cheated. What kind of man is he? He don't need Jesus. I began to look at that, and as I read it, I said, he's perfect. And he said, I've not done this. He said, I've not done that. I've not done, I've not, I've not, uh. 
Honey, you could get intoxicated with some not. And Jesus looked at him and he says, have you looked at a person and you're like, y'all know I'm real. Come on now. So you don't do it outside, but you do it on the inside. My daughter does that a lot. She's like, uh-huh. And you know how it is when you look to see Manuela at a per- because they're just going on about what they've not done. I've not drink. I've not had sex out of marriage. I've not had a divorce. I've not, I've not had, I've not gone to prison. I've, I've not, you, ooh, your life is so perfect. I'm so glad that God don't use perfect stuff. I, I believe that the more messed up injective you are, God uses you even more. Now, because he takes our marred condition in, a, in our marred state, come on, and then he begins to work that thing. Come on, how many of you know who, see, you, we got to give him something to work with. And, and if we're perfect, I'm so good, I'm still being worked on. How many of you are still being worked on? I'm still being worked on. How many of you, by a show of hands, say, I'm still being worked on? <laughs> oh, my God, my God, all the perfect people. God bless you, heaven. Listen, but, but he's still working something in me. Somebody say, work me, God. Work me, God. Somebody say, work me. So God looks at the young man in the book of Mark chapter 10. And he said, hmm. Jesus looks at him in love, though. He does. And he, when he looks at the young man in love, he says, listen, but there's one thing you do lack. He says, after having all of that, he says, but there's one thing you do lack. There's always a one thing. See, because we go through lives and stages and we go through, and then we'll say, God, this thing is still there. Okay, the Bible tells me that Paul goes to Jesus three times and says, can you not remove this, this thing from me? Somebody said, no lack. Number two, God says you don't, it's not about what you lack, but he says you have a capacity issue. Stay with me. Stay with me. He says it's not about what you and I lack, but you have a capacity issue. Jesus speaks to the young man in Mark chapter 10 and says there's one thing you do lack. He says, he says, El, listen. He says, what would I need you to understand about this young man? He has all of that stuff and he's not done nothing wrong. And he's kept the law perfect. But that's what he was never perfect. And so what Jesus says, go ahead and sell your real estate. Uh-huh. Go ahead and steal your commercial real estate. Come on up. I want to see if you can part with what you love. I want to see what gets between me and you. I want to see if you love him more than you love me. I want to see if you love him more than you love me. Come on up. I want to see. Huh? That's why God can look at ill God Abraham and say, I want to see what you're willing to offer. Up. Some of us will give you that, but we won't give you this. God says, can I have your best? My God, my God. So God says to the young boy, I want you to go and sell what's precious to you. Give what you love the most. Ain't that just like God? Because God said it's not about the lacking issues, your capacity. He said, if you can't give me your best, I can't release what belongs to you. But the moment you're willing to give it up, I can release it unto you. The Bible tells me that the Shunammite woman looked at the prophet and saw the prophet going back and forth and knew that the prophet did not have a place to stay. And she didn't talk about his condition. She took care of him. She made it happen. She built the room. She bought the bed. She bought the lamp. She bought the toga on the table. She made your fed him. And she didn't put it on Facebook. And she didn't put it on social media. And she didn't put it on Twitter. And she didn't put it on YouTube. Nah, 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 nah. She didn't put it on none of that. And because she did it with a heart that was willing, she gave him the best. He was living in the best. He was sleeping in the best. So God looks at the young man in Mark chapter 10. Says, go ahead and sell what you got. She looked at Mike. Have God ever asked you to do something like sow a seed and you say, the devil is a lie. Because you can't believe that God will ask you to sow that. You say, the devil. Oh, come on, church. Here's a word. Lie. And you didn't go to the Mosoto. Mark. The Bible tells me that this young man left it. God said his capacity was not there. As long, even though he had riches, his capacity had already come to the place of where it could not handle nothing else. But I prophesy to this house, your capacity just got enlarged enough. Your capacity is just elevating your capacity. Do I got anybody in here that says, Lord, that's for me? Do I got anybody in here that says, Lord, 
That's for me. I want more in God. I want more in what? I want more in what? God. I want more. I know you might say, she's a strange woman. I am. The Bible tells me in the book of Genesis 13, 14. Put that up there, media. Genesis 13, 14. Number two is not a capacity issue. It's not a lack issue. It's a capacity issue. I don't, I'm not moved by empty t- um, chairs. Because I know that that's not my capacity. Um, you can't be moved by what you make in a salary. That's not your full capacity. Um, Genesis chapter, th- um, chapter 13, verse 14. I want to prophesy this into your capacity. Come on. I want you to speak this with me. Come on. And the Lord said unto Catrico, come on. After that lot, come on, was what separate? Come on. Unto him. Come on, church. It says, lift up now your eyes. Come on. Do your eyes see it? Do your eyes see? It says, lift up now your eyes. Come on. And look from the place of where what? Come on, church. Where are we were looking? To the what? Northward. Come on. To the where? Where, Amari? Southward. Come on, Amari. Where? 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 Eastward. Come on. Come on. Where? 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 Okay. Why? Because when you look at chapter 4 of the Alice in Wonderland tale, the rabbit runs in into Alice again. But here's the thing. The rabbit now mistakes Alice for a maid servant. And the, and the rabbit is looking for some gloves and looking for some fan. Look, look, look. He says, look to the place. I hear the word says, look, look, look from the place of where you are. Wait a minute. The rabbit now mistakes Alice for a maid servant. So when you not become true servants of God, he says, I will open up the windows. He says, I don't care what's been shut. I don't care what's been blocked. He says, you don't have a lack issue of taking care of the lack. He says, not even about your lack number two. It's a capacity. Somebody say capacity. Somebody say expand my capacity. Come on. Somebody say expand my capacity. So she goes into the house prophetess and she's now searching because she's a maid servant. Oh God, whatever you tell me to do, how many of you say, God, I'll do it. God, if you tell me to sweep, I'll sweep. If you tell me to pray, I'll pray. If you tell me to fast, I'll what? Come on, church. If you tell me to give, come on, church. If you tell me, God, I can walk on it by faith, I'll walk on it. So the Bible tells me that Alice, Alice, she goes so Searching in the house, search me. Oh oh God, search this house. This house that's not made. We got a building that's not made by man's hand. I hear you, Holy Ghost. The Bible tells me this mortal in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 shall put on immortality. And this corruption shall put on incorruption. And then shall the same be. Oh death, where is your sting? Oh grave, come on. I cut him out of the grave. Oh, grave where? The capacity of the grave could not hold me. The capacity of the coffin could not hold me. The capacity of how they buried me could not hold me. Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where? My capacity, my capacity is expanding. Listen, church, how many of you believe this word? It's not just a a motivated message. No, no, no. It's a word that's birth. So as the prophet is speaking to the Shunammite woman, God is clearing up her birthing canal. Her husband is old. He can't do the do no more. Aye, 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 aye. Yes. Ain't it something? God takes the foolish thing to confine the wise. So, so now Alice is looking for the gloves. And she's looking for what the rabbit told her. Sometimes you're looking for it in the wrong place. But this time Alice went to the right house. Can I, can I teach just a little bit more? I promise. I promise because number one, I said, do, do not have a lack. God said he's taking care of the lack. Number two, I said, God said it's not about the lack. It's about our capacity. What? 
our capacity. So God, every time now I'm looking into myself, I'm going to prepare capacity up. And so the Bible says in Genesis 13, look now to the north, to the south, to the east, and the west. So Alice is now in the house looking and searching up. Then she finds another little bottle of drink. By the way, when you open up in chapter one of the story, Alice is drinking. Uh -huh. And when you look at her in chapter four, she's drinking. You would think that Alex has a drinking problem. My God, uh, I promise I'll stop at 1230. Uh, you would think that she has a drinking problem. I hear the Holy Ghost said just a moment ago, Amari, uh, the Bible tells me in the book of Acts chapter three uh, that they were all in the same place uh, and they were all drunk. And when they left the house, the man said, these men are not drunk as you supposed to be, come on. Because this is not the kind of wine that you think. This is a different kind of drink, come on. This is a different kind of drink. And so now in the story, Alice drinks another bottle. And the thing about this bottle, it expands her to where her head breaks the roof. In the name of Jesus, somebody say, God, remove, remove, open up your mouth uh, and say I remove everything from over me. Uh, say I remove everything from over me. Uh, the thing about it, she goes. Uh, now her capacity uh, is beyond what she can take. Uh, according to the power, I hear you Ephesians 3 and 20. Uh, and may God do exceedingly uh, abundantly Ephesians 3 and 20. Uh, according to the power, come on. Uh, do you receive that? Uh, somebody said there's power working. Uh, come on, there's power working. Uh, it's not a about the lack. It's about my capacity. Somebody say capacity. How many of you say God, I want it. How many of you say God, it's you. Say Holy Ghost, I need you, God. The capacity because when I'm filled, I won't slip anymore. When I'm filled, I won't fall anymore. When I'm filled, I won't break no more. When I'm filled, I won't gossip like that no more. You, you can't tell me you feel with the spirit of God and you still gossiping. You, you can't tell me you and I are filled with the spirit of God and we still running the train on people with our mouth and our tongue. Jesus, Jesus, you can't tell me that you feel, oh God, fill my cup, come on church, they said we sing in the song in the days of old, well, fill it up, you remember that one, you remember that one, sister Bridget, come on, fill it up until it overflows, fill my cup, Lord, I lift it up, Lord, come and quench, I, 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 this thirsting in Catholic soul, bread of heaven, bread of heaven, Bread of heaven, bread of heaven. I got capacity for more. I got ability for more. I got room for more. Bread of heaven, feed me. Feed me till I want. Feed me till I want no more. God says, I'm stretching you without measure. You will have a beginning but no end. You will go beyond the circle, your norm, your zip code, your pedigree, your background, your IQ, your education. This house will go beyond. Alice begins to grow, breaking through. Because when she drinks the little bottle, she knows know that the little bottle will have a great effect. When you took that little seed, you know your seed will have that effect. When you believe with your little faith, you know that your little faith will have a effect, an effect. The Bible tells me in the book of Daniel 4, 2 through 5, that Nebuchadnezzar is on his bed, and he begins to dream things, and uh, he says, I'm afraid. And so I speak in the realm of the spirit and the natural that you're going to dream and you're going to be afraid, not because of it's a nightmare, but because of how God is going to astound you. 
In the name of Jesus, we decree and declare. The Bible says that in Daniel 4, 2 through 5, Nebuchadnezzar, because his capacity, Nebuchadnezzar didn't even see, says, my God, what, 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 what is getting ready to happen to me? Come on. What is getting ready to happen? This woman, this woman doesn't even know what, what God is getting ready to do because God says, I see the need and, and I know, I know the need. And so he said, I already taken care of that. And what I'm going to do is expand your capacity. And you may not even feel qualified and you may not even feel like you're ready for it and uh, truth be told can I say you what she said verse 15 I'm coming down I'm coming down she said verse 15 in 2nd Kings 4 verse 15 and he said he said called her and when he had called her she stood in the door verse 16 and he said about this season uh, look at look at verse 16 2nd Kings 4 and 16 he says about this what church? Somebody said this is the season. Tomorrow is another season. It's not about summer, wind, spring, or fall. Somebody said this is a season. He says about this season, according to the time of life, you shall embrace a son. Number one, God said I've already taken care of the what? Somebody said lack. So God said, I've already taken care of the lack. Number two, he says it's not a lack issue. It's a capacity. Can I tell you that God had to move Joseph from where he was because that capacity was too small. So he puts him into another place to expand his capacity. And number three, you will embrace your desire. That's number three. You will embrace your desire. Hmm. Do, you, do you see what you're asking God for? It says here, and he said about this season, according to the time of life, according to the what? You shall embrace a what? I didn't come up with it. The word came up with it. You shall embrace your what? Somebody said, Lord. I'm ready to embrace. So I'm embracing my desire. Only you know what the desire is. So her husband was old. So one morning I was having prayer. And immediately in the realm of the spirit, I saw honey. I've been taking my honey a few days now. And I said, God, that is a, what, what are you showing me? And I saw honey coming out of your mouth first. And then the Lord began to speak to me. He says, daughter, what the ministry is about to step into is going to be so sweet. It's going to attract others. It's going to bring, it's going to draw. And then I began to pray about it some more. And then I felt in my spirit, I remember I was here on a Friday night. And I said, God, show me. And then he said, I want you to get honey. As a matter of fact, the moment I release it, I thank God for the leaders who purchased the honey. I thank you so much. God says, this church, the people that are here, he wants me to release the honey to you. And what if you believe in God for? If you desire, come and get it. Hallelujah. Whatever. And I'm going to tell you, it's a simple instruction. I prayed over these in the mornings when we're on the prayer line. I prayed over it. In the name of Jesus. Sorry if it's a little sticky. Stuff is going to stick and it's going to be sweet. <clears throat> it's going to be sweet. It's going to be sweet. I get she already, yeah. He has one. She has one for Josh. It's going to be sweet. It's going to be, it's going to be sweet. I'm giving you two for you and your wife. And that will serve. It's going to be sweet. Somebody say it's going to be sweet. I have prayed over these. I have a big old, I'm going to be telling y'all I'm, I'm a little bit greedy. So I have a big old one. Every morning I get up after the prayer line. 
Here's what the Lord said. For at least three times a day, after the prayer line or in your morning quiet time, you're going to dip a little bit of the honey and put it on your tongue. You're going to dip a little bit. You're going to do it three times a day. Why three? Because it's significant. Why three? Daniel prayed three times a what? Three men went further with Jesus. Death, burial, resurrection, someone say three. Three times three is what? Three plus three is six, but three times three is? What year are we on, church? God said it's going to be sweeter for you. He says what you're stepping in is going to be so sweet. He says it doesn't matter what's swarming you. Honey is significant. Psalm 81 and 16, it says, I fed Israel with the finest. God looks at the house of the Shunammite and says, you've cared for everybody else. It's time now for me to feed you. It's time now for me to release something into you. It's time now for me to bless you. You look for everybody else and you never look about yourself. As a matter of fact, you don't even ask anything for yourself. You're quicker to ask for someone else. You're quicker to do for someone else. You're quicker to bring it for someone else. You're quicker to give it for someone. You're so used to doing things for people that you're, it's strange when stuff is now being done to you because you're not used to it because you get satisfaction off of doing things for people. But God says now it's time for you to be satisfied, for you to be satisfied totally, for you to be satisfied in your mind, in your spirit, your soul, for you to be satisfied fully in what dream you're asking him to do, for you to be satisfied fully in relationships, for you to be satisfied and it will be sweeter. Because we serve a God that cannot lie, neither the Son of Man. He says, have I not spoken it, and shall I not make it good? Somebody say, make it good. You are getting ready to embrace your desire. And, and the thing about it is, when God tells us what we're getting ready to embrace, sometimes we do what this woman did, and look what she said. She said, and he said about this season, according to the time of life, L-I-F-E, life empowerment, according to the time of life, you shall embrace a son. And she said, go to verse 16. He said, you're going to embrace. And she said, no, my Lord. She said, you, the man of God, don't lie. In other words, don't get my hopes up. I've been rejected so much. I don't get my hopes up for this. But God says, yes, keep your hope up. Keep your, your hope elevated. He says, because it will speak and it will not lie. He says, you're about to release and receive the sweet. Somebody said, that's me. Somebody said, that's me, that's me. If you're watching, if you're watching, I want you to, you're going to put your address and I will send you, I will send you one. I will put it in the mail for you in the name of Jesus. Stay with me. I'm getting ready to close out. Somebody say, it's my time. Come on. Somebody say, you know, prophetess talk about step. Come on. Do you see how the words just line up? I've been teaching about building something. Somebody say, hashtag building. How many of you know you're still building something? Somebody say, he's building my story. And when you look at Alice in Wonderland, I'm getting ready to close out. When you look at chapter 9, it was so interesting because chapter 9 talks about the mock turtle story. So everybody that mocks you, your story is now going to be moved from mockery to miracle. Come on. Your story is going to move up from mocking to miracle. How many of you know that God says they may have mocked you that season. They may have mocked your seed and mocked your vision. Come on. The Bible tells me that my God help me with this. All your Ishmael who wants to laugh at the Isaac. We decree and declare Ishmael. We're going to invite you to the table. And God said see well I not put a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Stay with me all Oh, your Ishmael, you gonna embrace a son. She said, God, listen. She said, I, I don't know if I can actually that. Yes, 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 you can. Yes, yes. Somebody said, yes, yes, yes. Somebody said, yes. Somebody said, yes. I know I tried it once and it didn't work. And I believe for it a second time and it didn't work. The prophet said, you are going to embrace. What is it that you're believing God for embrace? And pause for me. What is it that you're believing God to embrace? Come on. Can you see yourself embracing it? Can you see yourself? There's an embrace. 
embrace of the spirit. There's an embrace of the power of the Holy Ghost. I told God I need more in my spirit. I said, God, where I'm at is not where I want to be. Come on, church. There's an embrace. Where is it that you're believing God for? He said, if you would open up. Somebody said, I'm ready, God. And so now the prophet speaks and the woman's faith is not there. So God said, I give permission to override the faith capsule. I give permission to override every faith that's been capped. Every faith that's been limited. Don't look at where you at now. But look out from the north. Look out from the south. Look out from the east. Look out from the west. So now Alice goes and, and she decides to go to one more place. She goes to mock turtle story. What was mock will be celebrated. What was a misfortune will turn to a miracle. Um, the mock turtle wants to now tell his story, but he's interrupted. God is about to interrupt some things for you. God comes and, and he interrupts this woman's life and he interrupts the man's life. I can just imagine that they were just comfortable in getting what they were used to. Don't get comfortable with it because he has so much more for you. Somebody say hashtag change story. He says you're going to brace. You're going to brace that which you're believing for. Hashtag straight change story. Hashtag. Somebody say hashtag change story. And so now when you look at your life, you look at the journey. And so now God says I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to have you to tell the story in that manner. But you're going to tell your story like it's a best selling book. You're going to tell it like it's a best-selling novel. Because all of the journey and where God has taken you, it's now becoming a bestseller. Yes, it's a bestseller in the corridors of heaven. It's a bestseller in the corridors of time. And I promise I'm closing here. Somebody say hashtag change story. Somebody say hashtag embrace it. Come on. Say hashtag embrace. There's some things that you are going to embrace. See, Hannah didn't know that she was going to embrace her Samuel, but she did. I don't care how long you're going to speak. See, God says honey is coming. How do you think the sun came? Uh, there had to be some honey that was brought back into the marriage. Somebody say honey sweet. Come on up. Somebody say, make it sweet. It's going to be a bestseller. Somebody say, hashtag tell it. I used to love the song that says, go tell it on the mountain, over the hill, and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hill. So when you tell it, I want you to remember to tell it like this. Tell chapter 5, when you went into the lion's den. You were thrown into the lion's den, but God allowed the honey to show up at the end when you became the partner in the den and you led them out by the pack. He said, tell chapter 8, the giant you had to confront. And in the honey, the honey came when you took the head off of the thing. God said, tell chapter 2. He says, oh, that kiss that Judas gave you, it, it felt like honey. But God used the kiss that became a sting and then rewrote your story. And the title of it was, Oh Death, Where Is Your Sting? He said, tell chapter 4 that Haman tried to come and hang you up. But the honey at the end, when God reversed the destruction and allowed you to rewrite the script. Oh, that's what he did did for Mordecai. He said, tell chapter 3, Jezebel who sent death threats. Jezebel who sent emails. Jezebel who sent the threats in the, in the honey. And God said, then I allowed you to open up the letter and then actually allowed you to take the honey, dip your finger and reverse everything back. The honey at the end when God anointed Jehu and Elijah never had to touch Jezebel. Elijah just spoke how her end was going to be a and God said, tell chapter 7 uh, how the mockery over your manger. They mocked over your manger and the honey that was released. Uh, because God now says, I'm taking uh, you from glory to glory. Uh, tell chapter 1. Uh, somebody say bestseller. Somebody say bestseller. Stand to your feet. I'm done. Uh, stand to your feet. Somebody say bestseller. Somebody say bestseller. He said, tell chapter 1. Uh, the backside of the devil. Uh, the backside of the devil.
of the desert. Uh, chapter 1 tells uh, how you got started uh, and how you had to go and find honey. Uh, how you had to find it uh, into some interesting places. Uh, how you begin to attract the stranger. Uh, he said, till chapter 9, uh, the dawn of destiny. Uh, honey in the making. Uh, till chapter 9, uh, the dawn of destiny. Uh, honey in the making. Uh, open up your mouth and say, God, it's mine. God said, you will embrace it. He said, see the sweet of it. Because we can have everything but that one area. There's no more lack. God said, I've taken care of it. I believe that so much because only you know where you stand. And then he says, it's not about the lack, number two. It's about capacity. If I'm speaking to someone, he says, your capacity. He says, he's opened up your spiritual man, your spiritual service, cervix to the north, to the south, to the east, and to the west. He says, there's so much more room. Because now, this woman was used to not having children. It was not a part of her story. Something that's not a part of your story has just become a part of it. And tell yourself it's time to embrace. I'm going to embrace what God said to me. I'm going to embrace concerning what he said over what I've planted. Come on. Begin to pray right where you're at. There's some things that You've been holding dear to your heart. There's some things that you're believing God for. See yourself embracing it. Jesus embraced the cross. I'm going to be honest. I'm like, Lord, do I have to embrace the cross? But sometimes to get to where you got to go, you got to embrace. So even if I got to embrace the cross, and we do, because it takes us on this beautiful journey that becomes a bestseller. Will you say hello tomorrow? Will you say hello to your next? Will you say hello to what you're building? And, and the woman said, no, I don't know if I can. And he looked at her and he said, yes, you're going to have it. All you got to do is believe. It's not the lack, it's the faith capacity to believe. And it doesn't matter what was looking at, what, what she's there. And if you notice, they kept speaking to the woman, but I'm sure her husband was there. Your agreement is in you. So when you agree that God is taking care of your lack. And then he says, it's not about even the lack, it's about capacity. He says, I, I, I allowed it to happen. So I can do something for you. He says, I allow it to happen so I can get the glory. He says, don't you know that's why I'll allow you to go? And that's why I'll allow the thing to come upon you? I didn't understand it. But I said, now, okay, Lord, I'm understanding better. He says, for his glory. I allow the struggle for because if you were like Job, you would say, what is this? He says, for my glory. Everything God does in your life, it's for his glory. Say, God, I embrace your glory. See, he doesn't share his glory with no man, but we can embrace. And so just like the Shunammite woman, it's embracing time. It's embracing time. Right where you're at, pray right where you're at. Put your honey in your hand. Don't lose it. Don't forget it. For nine days, we're going to pray. Um, Friday, Saturday, and even Sunday, we're only going to pray for 30 minutes. But Monday through Thursday, and every morning afterwards, we're going to taste of what God is saying. We're going to taste of this. You're simply going to dip your finger. 
put it on your tongue. You'll do it for three times a day. You know the time because sometimes we're at work and time will go by. And so you'll know the time. But in the morning after the prayer line, we're going to do it together. Then you decide when you're going to do it. I've been, I've been tasting of something huge. You're going to taste of something wonderful. She tasted of something that she had never had. The birthing of a child. There's some things that you're going to taste. And you're like, my God, how sweet it is. So, Father, the, this is a point of contact, just like how they used to use the oil. And we use the oil as a point of contact. God said to me, honey. And everywhere I go, when I preach, I'm going to have honey with me to release it to God's people. He used prophets differently. He used prophet Celia differently than how he uses me. He used me differently from how he uses you. But it's going to be sweet, daughter. You, do you know what God has for you? This can't even contain what he has for you. This can't. This is only but a tip of it. It's only but a taste of it. Am I talking to you? Evangeline, I'm going to send this to you if you're on with us, daughter. If you need, if you desire, you're going to put it in and I'll go back. And I'm going to ask Zeke and Leora to watch it and write all the addresses and send it to me. Is that good, son? If the address, if you put it there. There's no forcing. We don't force. Hallelujah. Father, lift it up to God. We stretch this in faith. This is not the full capacity, but this is just a tip and a taste. And you said, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. And we're tasting of what you promised us. And we're going to hold on to your truth. And Father, you said that this nine year what we're getting ready to birth out. Father, it will be for your glory. It will be for your praise. It will be for your honor. And there will be some pushing. And there will be some pulling. But Father, we will stay the cause. Because our story has just become a bestseller. Our story hashtag has just changed. And as you said that you have already prepared for the lack and you've taken care of the lack. And you said it's not about the lack, it's the capacity. And then you said, get ready to embrace. And so as we taste of the honey three times a day, as we know our clock in the morning and whatever other time, God, we know, God, it's only the faith that's applied to it. And we declare, God, you said, by this season. And so when nine cycles, the ninth month came, Father, by the ninth month, you said that we're going to see something in life empowerment. There should be growth. There should be expansion. There should be sweetness in people's home. Whatever that they're asking for. The cycle of pregnancy nine months. And we thank you for what you're doing. Father, we're so grateful. If you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior, repeat after me. Jesus, I come to you just as I am. Lord Jesus, I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, I confess I have sinned against you, against heaven, against earth. But you said if I confess my sin and believe, I shall be saved. I believe you, Jesus. I believe you are coming back again. And so today, I confess you as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Lord, for writing my name in the Lamb's book of life. In Jesus' name, 
if you're watching this for the first time, if you're watching this, if you scroll all the way to the end, and you maybe pick up the end, and you've said and you've confessed the prayer, know that God has received you in the kingdom. Know that you are getting ready to taste of the sweet because of your confession. In Jesus' mighty name, give God a clap offering. Give him 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 a clap offering. Pastor Celia, put it back into your hands. Hallelujah. Next week, everyone, I want you to walk with a seed. I want you to walk with a $100 seed. $100. If you don't have it, still come. But it's time for us to sow. You have a pastor that does not ask for seed often, but it's time. We got to plant. We're planting in the ninth season. Amen. So walk with a hundred dollars or more, at least a hundred. Amen. I put it back into the hands of pastor who will instruct you about giving. God, you know, we leave this place, God. We thank you, God, that you're expanding our capacity for more, God, more in you. And Father, we thank you, God, even as virtue have left the said apostle of this house, God, that you would return virtue to her body, God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, God, that there will be no backlash, God. But Father, we thank you, God, that you'll continue to operate by your grace. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and we say, Amen. You may have your tithe, your offering ready at this time. If you have your offering, your tithe, if you leave an envelope, let us know. Just lift your tithe, your offering. Father, we thank you, God, for every hand that's lifted, God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, God, that you are God, the provider, God. You are the one who provides everything that we need, God. And Father God, even now as we be obedient to your word, God, and we give our 10%, God, we give our tithes, we give our offerings. Father, we thank you, God, that you will multiply the 90% that we have left, God, in the name of Jesus. Father, your word says, God, tenfold, a hundredfold, a thousandfold, God, is what we speak, God, over what we're about to give and what we have left, Father, I thank you, God, even for those who don't have to give, God, that, Father, you would bless them, God, and bless them more abundantly. Father, I thank you, God, even as I speak Ephesians 3 and 20 over each hand that's raised, God. Father, I thank you, God, that, Father, you would do an exceedingly abundantly above all they can ask or think. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and we say, amen. You may bring it up with expectation.